Let's talk about something from old League of Legends that was really cool. Runes and Masteries. Now, I have to clarify myself here and talk about a few things, otherwise I'm going to get comments, and rightfully so. Let me be absolutely clear, the old system was not perfect, and I'm not going to defend how stupidly expensive old runes were for no good reason. Most players back in the day only had one or two complete pages and would be stuck using those same pages for a ton of different champions. I remember a long time ago there was a quote from I'm a Cutie Pie where he said something like, Dude, I've been using the same rune page for like 5 years for ADCs and never changed it. Which was definitely not optimal, but screw it, because a full page would cost anywhere about the same as 4 to 7 new champions, which is a trade-off that players often didn't make. There were also lower tiered runes to help fill in slots when players couldn't afford the real ones, and in the case that you were an absolute gamer and somehow had all the runes, guess what? You couldn't change them in Champion Select, forcing you to buy more rune pages. I know a lot of you out there probably still have a bunch of additional rune pages, but it's a blessing that you're not forced to buy more these days, because for me personally, I just change the same one every game. None of these things are good, and Riot has made great strides to the point that, objectively, all things considered, yes, the current runes are better. So why am I making this video then? Well, because better doesn't necessarily mean good, and certainly better does not mean perfect. Regardless of what year we're talking, I've never been a true fan of the rune system in this game because it could be improved upon drastically. I don't think that runes should be removed at all, by the way, because it's really fun to use them. Popping Electrocute, huge first strike procs, stacking lethal tempo, grasp and shield bash combination auto attacks, kiting with fleet, it's super fun guys, but it's also kind of far from perfect. There were things that the old masteries did a little bit better that were lost in all the other improvements. The old masteries provided more of a chance to experiment, adjust based on a player's playstyle, and have better customization for the individual. But before we dive in, today's video has been sponsored by Repeat.gg. Repeat is a great opportunity to have more fun while gaming and also earn some cool rewards. Check this out. The website runs a series of tournaments to compete for prizes. Now I know what you're thinking. Okay, but what if I don't have any friends or can't coordinate some custom games? Don't worry, neither do I. Instead, the way that Repeat works is it runs these tournaments based on your league account, and you earn score and points simply by playing the game as you normally would. Now again, I know what you might be thinking, you're about to say, okay, I've heard this before, so I have to download their software, don't I? The answer to that is no. Everything that Repeat does is directly through their website. Not only do you just simply link your game account, but it will also begin tracking your progress for you. It really is that simple. Right now, Repeat is running this very exciting $5,000 prize pool Fall Classic. First place gets 500 bucks. You guys should definitely join this tournament. All you have to do is click this big blue button. You can't miss it. Click it right there. Join with my link in the description down below. I'm gonna enter this tournament and you should too. Come compete against me. If you're more of a competitive person like me, then you can enter tournaments for tokens and cash and really try to prove yourself and compete. That sounds like fun to me, but even if that's not your jam, you can still enter as many free ones as you want. There is absolutely no restriction to how many brackets you can enter. You can then redeem tokens for RP cards and gift cards, and get this, maybe if you just want the money, no problem. You can link your PayPal in withdrawal to spend it on whatever. Like I said, Repeat is an awesome opportunity and there's no reason not to enter. Even if you're just more casual, why not hop in there and see just how many points you can accrue against your friends? Thank you again to Repeat for sponsoring this video, and go to the link that's in the description down below, the one that you see on screen right now. I want it to be known that I'm mostly making this video for discussion purposes, because I like to talk about this stuff. I think it's really interesting, and I hope you guys do too. I enjoy talking about game design, but I don't want to mislead you into thinking that I'm saying League must do this or the game is dead. That's going to happen eventually, regardless of what we do or what rune system we have, alright? So that's just out of our control. Alright, the old system. It's important to remember that it used to be split into two categories, runes and masteries. The runes were simple and not at all like perks, they were just stats, and to be honest, it wasn't terribly interesting. The only cool part of the system, I suppose, is that you could choose more things than we can now. Most of the time these days, you're going to just take attack speed, adaptive force, and whatever resistances you need. Truth be told, most champions can take this and probably be fine. 
However, in the previous runes, you could take, for example, gold runes instead of damage. You could pick lethality runes for a big mid-game power spike, and you could even pick crit runes where sometimes players would be a little bit cheeky and swap one of their AD runes for a 1% crit chance. This would end up being hilarious if you actually netted a kill from it, and I guess that's, again, interesting, sort of, but compared to what we have today, it's not that bad, since any stats you used to gain from the runes are just moved to mythic passives. You can get as much lethality as you used to if you build Prowler's Claw. If you used to run an ability cooldown setup by taking CDR in your blue runes, well, you can get that now by grabbing one of the several mythics that give haste. If you want gold, we have Treasure Hunter, we have Futures Market, and First Strike. I believe it was a positive change that Riot combined runes and masteries all into one, because picking these stats wasn't interesting enough on its own to be a separate system. In today's main video topic, what I actually will be talking about is the system of Masteries, which was the predecessor to Runes Reforged. Runes Reforged came out for Season 8, and while being a solid change, I believe years later they missed the mark on something they wanted to achieve. The major goal from Riot for Runes Reforged was to let the player build pages based on their playstyle. I remember some quotes at the time being along the lines of like, a player should be able to build 6 or 7 different pages based on how they like to play the game a you-do-you you sort of mentality. They wanted to sell this idea so much that before the system even hit the live servers, over a month in advance, they gave us a little tool where we could play around with the new system, build our own pages for fun, incentivizing the player to experiment, theorycraft, think about what pages might be cool and fun and good. I remember at the time watching Freak's rundown of this new system. I was genuinely excited for this update, thinking that League was going to be a whole new game, now with a proper RPG-style tech tree. And if you fast forward more than five years later, well, that's not what has happened. At all. That's not even a matter of personal opinion. You can criticize my take if you want, but objectively, Runes Reforged has completely failed in terms of being about player choice and playstyle, because even Riot thinks so. Do you know why this season Riot implemented a brand new default rune builder for your champion? I feel like a lot of players have misrepresented the main true reason. Everybody seems to say that it's because greedy Riot wants to destroy third party sites. And okay, look, fine, that's part of it. Yes, without a doubt, Riot probably didn't like that sites like u.gg and op.gg were taking away a good amount of traffic from their game. Obvious greedy corporate BS aside, do you know the more likely reason? I believe, anyway, it's because runes are absolutely required to be correct, more than ever before. Taking the wrong runes is not a minor mistake. It's not really a little oopsie, haha, my bad guys, sorry. It is blatantly trolling. Runes are so important now to a complete and total fault. It is a genuine problem to take bad ones. The fact that the game gives you recommended rune setups is basically a direct admission from the developer saying there are correct choices for your champion, and anything outside of this most of the time is going to be incorrect. This is where we need to talk about this row of runes. No other group of runes in the entire game exemplifies the problem like this one. Conditioning, Second Wind, and Bone Plating. Each one of these runes are very good and can be used effectively, but for entirely different reasons that have nothing to do with playstyle and player choice. There's a very good coaching analysis video by Shock where he goes over a replay from the World Championship. It's a solid breakdown, and if you play mid lane, I really recommend you check it out. In this match, World Champion winning mid laner Zekka is able to win this melee into range matchup that we saw a lot at the World Championship, Akali into Azir. What he ends up pointing out several times is a good learning point, stating that Zekka isn't afraid to trade health and CS with the Azir, and in fact, that's the correct play. Playing aggressive in this lane is the right call because he has the clear sustain advantage. Zekka, much like every other melee into range matchup that you will see at the highest level, takes the combo of Dorn Shield and Second Wind. There is essentially no good way to play the lane properly in a melee versus range matchup without taking second wind. If Akali goes conditioning or bone plating here, it wouldn't be because that's the quote unquote play style that Zekka likes. It would be as black and white as saying, you know what, that's a mistake, that is an error. 
and I feel like it's the same thing in a scaling matchup that's melee versus melee. A tank should take conditioning. In a matchup you need to survive in, you should take bone plating. Just like it's a poor decision to not go second wind into Teemo, it's a poor decision to not take bone plating into Renekton. The point of bringing this up is not to say we need to nerf Second Wind, nerf Akali, nerf Azir, or nerf Bone Plating. The runes are being used in the correct spot. Second Wind is good into range champions. Go figure, that's what it's supposed to do. So what's the problem here? The problem is that no part of this is what runes should be used for. Wouldn't it be better to address this problem on a sort of case-by-case -case basis and looking at a champion's stats, rather than tying in 1000 plus healing from second wind in the laning phase, or 700 plus damage block from bone plating, or the ability to push one more wave for a reset because you had to take biscuits, wouldn't it be better to look at the health regen and mana regen for certain champions? Why is Akali's ability to play this lane correctly balance around and predicated on making the correct choice? You are forced to go second wind. When even the developers seem to agree that there's only a couple viable setups per champion and we should be taking runes based on win rate in data rather than the champion's playstyle or the player's playstyle, why are these not just passives? Runes at the moment are so much less of a tech tree or a perk deck that you would see in a role-playing game than it is a simple barrier to entry problem. Runes are a complete and total knowledge check. And that's why we have this rune builder. That's why the websites were so useful. Because if you don't know what runes are good, you look it up. You would never try to theorycraft what randomly sounds good to you. I don't really have this problem with keystones. Most champions have one, maybe two options, a few champions have three, and maybe a couple champions in the game can take four or five keystones, but I think it's fine to me that Mordekaiser or Darius can really only take Conqueror and nothing else makes any sense. There are bigger fish to fry in this game and more problems than the fact that Grasp Darius isn't super viable or whatever. However, because there are so few minor runes, only 5 in total from the 3 that you can pick from your main tree and 2 from the secondary, and they're all so different and all so impactful on their own, it makes it so choices here are incredibly limited. This is the problem, because Riot said the entire goal of Runes Reforged was to make it so players could choose based on their preferences. The old masteries had a lot more choices, and in terms of power level, they were all tuned down massively. The power creep of the game really shows its ugly face when it's referring to old runes and masteries. There was absolutely nothing that would give you thousands of healing, thousands of damage, and instead, precisely because they were a fraction of the power level, it meant that you weren't objectively making incorrect choices. There was nothing like the situation we laid out where it's like, if you don't take second wind here, you're doing this wrong. Masteries ended up going through two major cycles. For seasons 2016 and 2017, they introduced the Keystone Masteries. This is when things like Thunderlords and Fervor of Battle were first introduced. However, before 2016, Masteries were still in the game, just without these major Keystones. Let's start with the 2017 Masteries. The Cunning Tree was the perfect example of giving the player more choices. In this row, there were three options. One that was called Bandit, that very often supports would take because it gave you one gold for every CS that you didn't get, but also gave you a little bit of gold for damaging your opponent as well. And that of course makes perfect sense for supports, but just for fun, sometimes I would take this and mess around with this in solo lanes. It wasn't a ton of gold, and it was definitely not overpowered, but it was just enough to make you consider taking this over the other two options in the same row, which were Greenfather's Gift and Dangerous Game. Dangerous Game was a mix of Triumph and Presence of Mind, but scaled down quite a bit, and Greenfather's Gift gave you a small empowered auto when in a bush, pretty similar to Ivern. Let's look at another row of three choices in this tree. Runic Affinity, which made Jungle Buffs and Baron Buff last 15% longer, Secret Stash, which was the predecessor to Biscuits, and Assassin, which gave you 2% more damage when no allies were nearby. You can see how none of these are overwhelmingly strong, but it's just enough to make someone consider it based on how they like to play. A Jax player would definitely like to have biscuits for the laning phase and help them scale, but maybe that 2% damage is alluring for all the split pushing they'll do later on. A Rise player would also like to go biscuits, makes perfect sense for him, but maybe, just maybe, if you ask your jungler nicely, if you can get 2, 3, maybe 4 blue buffs during one of these longer games, Man, that would be really nice to have Runic Affinity then, wouldn't it? And that's the point of what this system did well. Much more often I would see high level players messing around with this and trying some new masteries, getting some new fresh ideas out there. 
Let's go all the way back to 2013 and look at the defensive tree because there was some pretty cool stuff in here. This row had defender, where some minor resistances were given to you if teammates were nearby. This would be pretty cool to take if you're more of a team fighter or a player who likes to group. Legendary armor increased your resistances based on percentages, good if you're going to build a full tank this game. And good hands would reduce the time of death, very good if you're Baus. And finally in this row there was reinforced armor, which reduced crit damage. This mastery, you might say, is just like the current issue that I laid out, where there would clearly be a situation when you would want to take this. If the enemy has a Yasuo or a Trindamir and some traditional ADC, you should definitely take this rune, and that would be the correct choice. This one is more along the lines of being situationally always correct, so I think it's less interesting than the other options here. But remember, this is just one of the many different choices, and wouldn't be taking up a huge 1 out of 5 slots for the minor runes like it would now. I think where Riot truly messed up with the new runes is that too many of them are far similar to reinforced armor, where it's so obviously correct sometimes, and instead they should have done things more like good hands. Improved recall was pretty cool, it would reduce the time of your recalling, and I love this idea and wish we still had it in the game. In the same row, you could choose between meditation, which gave some mana regen, good for champions who like to stay in lane, or you could go for wanderer, which gave the movement speed out of combat, much better for a roaming playstyle. And you could see how the same player, playing the same champion, could maybe mix this up if they wanted to play a little differently. Again, while it's very true that meditation seems normalized for Rise, you should probably always take it, right? Well, what if you like to roam? What if you like to move around the map and make things happen? You wouldn't miss out on so much mana regen that the entire lane is no longer playable, and you wouldn't necessarily miss out on so much out of combat movement speed that you can never roam. The Wealth Mastery would increase your starting gold, and based on how many points you put into it, it could give you 25 or 50. The depth of the old system was very interesting because you decided how much you wanted to tech into each mastery, rather than being so binary, either off or on. Awareness would increase experience, which is pretty cool for Kassadin players who like to scale, but clearly you would be giving up some early power to take this. And finally, there were masteries that were specifically for junglers, something that we don't see at all today. Bladed Armor, for example, was a defensive mastery that gave a mini Thornmail effect applying to monsters whenever they would hit you. The only rune that has anything to do with jungle at the moment, I guess would be the Smite cooldown from Cosmic Insight, but I would hardly call that a jungle-focused rune. I hope that you can now see where the old system felt much more like an RPG and being able to design a page around how you like to play the game. Nowadays, because runes are so powerful, it ended up having an adverse effect where anytime you go anything that's less than optimal, it's a big deal. By having more choices that gave a minor yet still noticeable effect, it means that you're more likely to want to experiment. Anyway, those are just my thoughts. Please feel free to let me know what you guys think in the comments down below of both the current rune system and the old one. I loved the old minor masteries, but the current keystones are still pretty cool and I do enjoy them a lot. Heck, it's even fun to just go in the practice tool and see how big of a first strike proc you can get, because why not? I don't know, it's pretty exciting and fun to go for big combos. Anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed the video, and if you did, please leave a like and subscribe, it always helps me out. Thank you guys very much for watching, and I'll see you next time.